My farming practices are essentially centered around biodiversity. The idea that we can perform agriculture out here, feed people, but do it in a way that also enhances the wildlife of the farm. Instead of trying to work against nature, we're trying to work with it. I started the farm in 2004. Actually, this is the farm I grew up on. I never had any intention of moving back, but then I kind of rediscovered the place and I got to a point in life where I really just wanted to come back and farm. So my name is Joy Miller. I came to Key Wade and Farms in 2017 through my relationship with my now husband, Rufus. He was primarily doing organic vegetables uh, when I first came, but as I have uh, moved into the picture, I added a lot of different diverse flowers, as well as growing flock of sheep, uh, as well as a few goats. Um, and I also do culinary and medicinal herbs, so I'm expanding more into like apothecary wellness herbs. Um, so I think overall just we've added a lot more species in the last eight years or so. So we have quite a few barn swallows on the land here and primarily the barn swallows are in, our, in the back of our barn where we raise our sheep flock. Our study was conducted in 2022 in a valley of the Italian Alps. We select in total uh, nine dairy cattle barns. Our main question were, do the presence of barn swallow reduce the activity of feed flies? And does also the number of barn swallow reduce the activity of feed flies? We're selected four barns that actually have nestling barn swallows. So inside the, the, the barn, they were active nest and five that had not any nest at all. These barns were visited once a week from April until the end of August. And we collect data about the presence of barn swallows, the number of active nests, the broad size, and the number and age of the chicks. We use a telescopic pole with a mirror in it. It was really fun to work with the, this, this tool. But meanwhile, we also monitored the activities of flies. Uh, sticky card were used to understand what kind of field flies were inside each, uh, each barn, while spot cards were used to monitor the activity rate. The barn swallows are flying all around us. You can you know, kind of see their presence and hear their presence everywhere. I believe they've had an impact by you know, their fly consumption and you know, it's, it's nice to have them around. I feel like they are sort of symbiotic with, with the sheep flock. Um, one thing that we've been grateful for is that we've never had an incidence of fly strike, which can be really difficult on animals, um, for the farmer, for the animals. <laughs> A lot of people dock tails and uh, dock them real short, which can be, you know, problematic for the animal. And, you know, a lot of the reason for tail docking, it's to prevent fly strike because if they have a tail, then they have manure buildup. So I've experimented with not docking tails and they still are staying pretty clean and I've still seen no flies. So I think that's a testament to how the birds are doing. Interestingly enough, I think the role that barn swallows play in relation to managing our fly population it's all anecdotal, but I see them out there constantly in the pastures, flying around all day long. I assume they're eating flies, and it does seem like we have less flies out here. Joy was saying they, even just their presence kind of spooks the flies, and I like thinking about that too. So the idea of this study actually arrived from the landscape of fear theory. When a prey is experiencing this fear of being uh, predated, they start to change kind of their behavior. We thought if field flies are more alert, they will spend less time still on walls or spot cut. So they keep moving because they fear they can be predated. The less dots we are going to, to find. And so we found that around the peak, of the species breeding season, which was mid-July. Uh, uh, the swallow presence helped the activity of flies in uh, the barn. 
passing from zero swallows or no swallows to 25 swallows. This would reduce the sign of uh, flies activities from 166 to si just 65. So it's uh, equal to an average reduction of the 60%, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> To, to sum up, uh, the, the sole presence of barn swallows is sufficient to reduce the activity of flies inside uh, the, the barn, but also the number uh, of barn swallows inside the, the barns uh, reduce more. So the, the more the merrier, let's say. For other farmers who are curious about bringing birds in, I would say just do it. Start with something that you're excited about. So if you really like the nesting process, do that. If you are into grasslands, you can do that. If you want hummingbirds, plant flowers. There's so many species that need different niche habitats and foods and water supplies. The advice I would give other farms is to start small, start simple. One of the easiest things you can do is just go out into your fields and just observe what's out there. And then you can start tailoring your particular farm to this species that you have already in existence. And then I would strongly suggest developing a relationship with organizations like the Wild Farm Alliance or all these other great organizations that are out there that have done such tremendous work to learn about the birds and the habitat and, and to help us figure out how we can interact with them. And also, reach out to other farms. See if you can build a coalition of farms that can develop a habitat together because the broader your habitat, the better off those birds are gonna be. What I really love about working with birds is to explore and navigate different issues related to the protection of biodiversity. I think that it's important to, to stress that bringing back nature, it helps not only biodiversity conservation, but brings really a lot of resourceful solution for farmers as well.